go. It's asking me if I want to boot from CD. I don't. I could have pressed a key to boot from CD there. But now that it's got Windows and it's halfway through the setup, it remembers what it's doing. Here we go. There's the start screen that's presented to you after it's uh, rebooted. Okay, then we go into the setup. Now there'll be a bit of flickering here, perhaps. Yeah, well, it's not that bad. Well, I hope this comes out okay. Okay. And from now on, it just does it all by itself. It says it will take approximately 39 minutes. Um, it may be a little bit quicker. It's a rough estimate. But basically now, it's just preparing the installation. And all you've got to do during this whole installation is simply put in your serial number, uh, choose which language you want your keyboard, uh, check that the clock has got the right time, just little things like that, you know. There aren't really any options here at all other than those. So just let it do its thing. I mean, sometimes when I'm building machines, I'll, uh, I'll just leave it setting up and then I'll do something else. I'll come back in ten minutes, oh, all right, change the keyboard settings, tell it, right, I want that kind of keyboard, UK or whatever, press enter, let it get on with it, come back in another ten minutes, do what it, you know, put in whatever else has to be inputted. You don't have to like stand over it all the time. Okay, so now it's installing devices. It says down at the bottom there. Installing devices. I'll just zoom into that and show you. Hang on. There you go. Installing devices. That's the main components on the motherboard. This takes a little while. Okay, this is our first thing we have to do. Regional language options, pretty straightforward. To get the mouse, customize. I want English, United Kingdom. Check the languages. Don't need any of those. Advanced, I want the language English. United Kingdom it, it's, it subtly changes things uh, on the keyboard if you're British OK, apply that OK it and then check the details again, it's naughtily left it on English United States right now they're both there now English US and English UK I'll choose the UK apply OK it, and that's that. Next, now put in your name. And then here I'll put uh, anyone. You don't have to put an organisation or anything. Next, the product key. This is where you put in your product key code which should be on your Windows uh, dual CD dual case, so I'll just uh, not show you this bit, all right. <laughs> We've put in our serial and pressed enter, or click the next key, rather. And now, computer name and administrator password has to be added, OK? Uh, currently, the computer name, as you can see there, so I called it anyone when it asked for the name, so anyone, and it's added a random number after that. But uh, we'll change that, give it a name that's easy to identify because I'm going to put it on the network here. Yeah. So we simply type in here, backspace that, and I'll just call it anyone. I won't add an administrator password yet. Okay, you can do that later. So next. If you do it now, put the passwords in now, it means you're going to have to put in a password every time the damn thing boots, and when you're setting up all the stuff after installing Windows, having to put in a password every single time it, you reboot it, which is many, many times, becomes a right pain. So just add your password at the end once uh, you've finished installing all the hardware. I'll show you that later. OK, now the date and time. June the 3rd, 3.20, Thursday. 
Again, it always tries to put the time to American Pacific time, US and Canada, because uh, they're the centre of the universe. <laughs> so let's put it to Greenwich Mean Time, which is the reference. Good old British Greenwich Mean Time. OK, next. That's it. That's, that's basically that bit. It's, gonna, it's now installing the bits and bobs. As you can see here, this is preparing installation is done, and now we're in this bit installing windows. I'll just zoom that in. Look, see. So whichever one's orange is like where it is so far. We've been through all the bits above, and now it's installing windows. And now it just kind of trundles along and does its thing. And you can see down the bottom right there, that little thing keeps cursoring along, letting you know that everything's doing something. And as it installs, you'll see the screen will just change and loads of stuff comes up saying to you how great Windows XP is and how Bill Gates should be God and... or is God, the real one. <laughs> so that's it. Well, you can sit there and read all the uh, the promo text if you like. Get support for the latest hardware and software. Windows XP Professional supports a large range of programs and built-in support. Blah, 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 blah. So it's doing its thing now. It's installing the network down at the bottom there. Easily move documents and personal settings to a new computer. You know, it'll just give you page after page of all this, like, look how great we are. OK, now we come to network settings. Now, um, if you disable the onboard LAN in the BIOS, remember I showed you that earlier, this won't, you won't be asked about this, OK? Uh, as far as I remember, because frankly I always install the LAN on every machine I build for the purpose of porting over everything. Um, but I would assume that uh, if the LAN is disabled and it can't find any kind of uh, network connector, then it won't bother adding these network settings, OK? But if you have your uh, onboard LAN uh, network connector enabled in the BIOS, or you've put in a network card, just leave it on typical settings. Yeah. Next, put it on a work group. Again, if you're not having a network at home, just leave it there at default work group which I'm going to do. Again, that can be changed later, no problem, so just next. OK, so our computer is having the network settings installed, which it's done, and it's put it on a work group called Work Group. You know, if it's not connected to a network, it'll just ignore all that stuff anyway, but uh, I'll be using that, as I said, to port things over like drivers off the internet. Because as I say, there's a few drivers to install, and um, especially graphics drivers, can be sometimes 20 or 30 meg for the whole package. Fair enough. Um, another thing you need to do with via boards, especially for audio use, is you must always apply, the very first thing after Windows has been set up, we, we will apply the Hyperion via patch, which comes from via, you can download it. Um, it's a driver set, for all the onboard bits on the uh, on the motherboard, like the, the um, chipset and stuff like that, USB, um, you must always install that via patch. If you haven't and you're using a via machine, get yourself over to via and download the Hyperion patch. They've unified it now. Before you had a different patch for different chipsets, but now there's just one, and it applies to all via chipsets even going back to the older ones like the 266 and the 133 I think it even covers the 133 don't quote me on that but I think it does but anyway you must install that Hyperion patch yeah, because that can eliminate any problems that uh, may have been reported back in the past to do with um, problems with the audio card crackling or things like that okay so it's carrying on installing and you're getting more promo text there. Windows XP has been designed from the ground up to be the best operating system for digital music and entertainment. Etc, etc. So I'll have a slurp of my coffee and uh, watch a 
what's this going on? Anyway, there are thousands of uh, sites showing you how to install Windows XP. <coughs> so, you know, you don't have to go, you can just do it from a text based page. You know. um, Dance Tech has got a, a, a PC build in the article section that includes the XP install. Okay, registering components. Okay, you can see now it's um, it's changed again. If you look down at the bottom there, now it says finalizing installation in Orange. Okay, so we've installed Windows. We're just finalizing it, and it'll take seven minutes. You can see it's saving the settings there. You can hear the CD-ROM working like crazy. So you know it's pretty quick. Fifty-two times standard now. I mean, you <laughs> if only for you noobs, if you could remember back in the old days of Windows for Work groups and what. I mean, talking about early Windows machines now, not uh, Acorns and Ataris and things like that, Amigas, but uh, my God, when it was like four and eight times CDs, I mean, can you imagine setting up Windows <laughs> on a CD that only deliver data like four times or eight eight times you know and worse than that have you ever tried to set up Windows 95 from a set of floppy disks <laughs> on a laptop with no CD-ROM or something oh my god that is a, that is uh, well I think they should offer it as some sort of alternative punishment for minor petty crimes in society <laughs> frankly <laughs> god talk about a labour of love you get something like what was it 28 discs or something and uh, oh now it's removing any temporary files used I don't know if I can catch that now I didn't catch it so as I said it will have stored temporary files on the hard disk for the setup it's now removed those it's done it's going to boot now and here we're going to go into Windows for the first time rebooting detecting the hard drives it's still because I've got the CD and it's still saying you know Press any key to boot from CD, just ignore that and it will bypass the CD. Hey, here we go. Windows XP Professional. And to improve the appearance of visual, can you see that? Of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust your screen res. Okay, fair enough. Click OK. We'll go blank for a minute and flicker. Windows, oh, here we are, there's a new one there. Windows adjusted your screen res. If you can't read this text, click. if you can read this text, click OK to continue. So I'll click OK. And here we go. Ooh, zoom out. Oop. Please wait. Here we go. Come on, baby. You can do it. Whoa. Welcome to Microsoft Windows. Da 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 da. It's got a complete, you know, intro step through. I'm here to help you. Blah blah blah. Okay, you can follow that if you want to have a look at it and see what it says. Personally, I completely ignore it. Next, I'll be right here if you need me. Yeah yeah yeah. Off you go. Get lost. Uh, Windows check to see if your computer is on the internet. Uh, what it's trying to do here is, is uh, register XP with or, or some such uh, nefarious activity with Microsoft. Now, I never ever put Windows in update mode, okay? In fact, I don't even like Service Pack 1 to be honest. There's an encouragement to have Service Pack 1, which again is an NT throwback. Um, for security reasons. Well, frankly, if you've got a good firewall, if you're on the net, and you use a good antivirus software, uh, which actually you can get a, you can get fantastic antivirus software for free now, like from Anwil or whoever. So, um, you know, I don't bother with the updates. I just really don't. I don't have any problems with unupdated machines. Um, so I just leave it alone. You don't have to use any of these you can just actually go to skip and bypass that skip down here yeah 
You see that? And just bypass completely, so I'm going to skip it. Are you ready to register online with Microsoft? Let's just zoom in on that. Are you No, I'm not. Because, you know, it's bad enough having to pay this amount for an operating system, which costs, you know, half the price almost of the blasted machine itself. So, no, not at this time. Okay? Next. Your name. Right. Well, you have to put in one name here. Okay? So, I'm going to call it um, the underscore. Oh, you can't use underscore, can you? The user. Oh, that looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? Let's call it uh, Jimmy. Okay? You have to you have to put one user in because there has to be like one account. Yeah. Okay. Next. Congratulations, you're ready to go to learn about the exciting new features. Take the product to blah blah blah. And that's it. Just press finish down the bottom there on the right. You can see that, can't you? Yep. Finish. And that's it. Now the screen goes black. Welcome. We're in. Will be a bit of a uh, bit of hourglass activity here while it just uh, dithers around a bit and loads up a few cool components. Ooh, a lovely green tranquil feel to make you feel like you're not stuck in an office wasting your life away working for a corporation. <laughs> right, this is the basic default Windows. This is the new XP um, taskbar, a word taskbar down here, and this is the new Start menu and all that. Now I'll just quickly show you a few tips that you want to do when you first start the machine. First of all, the dreaded Windows Messenger keeps on bloody popping up. Let's get rid of that. To do that, cancel this tour, yeah. Here's your Windows Messenger. I'll zoom in on that. <coughs> Down the bottom right, the dreaded Windows Messenger with a little um, white X in a red circle. That blasted thing keeps putting itself back into your start menu. So let's eliminate that first. Right click on it and choose exit. Okay. Okay, then zoom out. Let me zoom out so you can see this. Now we go to start. Just make sure you can see that. Yeah. Start um, my computer. Go into your local hard disk. These files are hidden. Fine. Show the contents of this folder. Click that. Okay. Go into program files, these are hidden, show contents. We can change that so it doesn't so show hidden all the time. There's the messenger folder there. See that? Okay, just zoom in. So we're going to go into that, double click. Now there's your dreaded uh, messenger program. Okay, so step back out and the messenger folder, just click it so it's highlighted, click once more or you can right click and choose rename can you see that? Oh, I need to zoom out a bit there, hang on. yeah right click and choose rename and just call it messenger off see that? okay <coughs> that means that Windows won't be able to find it anymore when it tries to re-put it back into your start menu little and so that it is so. Let's just get that back into the middle. So now we called it we, we called it Messenger off. We're just renaming, and now this error, this um, warning thing comes up. Renaming, moving, or deleting Messenger could make some programs not work. Well, exactly. That's that's the whole bloody point, isn't it? Do you want to do this? Yes. Right now, close that. Go back to our start menu, choose, just check you can see this actually, can you see that? Yeah, choose run down there, and then this dialog box opens, right? Let me zoom in on that. Type in here MS config and press enter. Okay, now this is your, this box appears, okay? And if you can look up there, you'll see start up at the end of all these things. Ignore everything else for the moment. Right? So let's go into let's go into start up. Right there it is. 
bloody thing. MS, look, MS messages or messengers or whatever it is, C program files messenger, right? And it's tick, which means it will start up every time. Now we've turned it off, we've just we've changed the name of its folder so Windows will never be able to find it again and put it back in the start menu. Detick that, okay? Then down here, click apply, okay? Now the you have to do this renaming thing because basically if you de-tick this in the startup sooner or later by hook or by crook somehow or Windows does tend to try and put it back in and it can happen from time to time it's a right pain so apply close now this message appears asking you you've made changes do you want to restart exit without restart I'm choosing okay next we've done that Messenger will never come back to haunt us. And Messenger, by the way, is, can be used as an exploit on the internet for, for you know, various nasty activity that goes on. Okay, so right-click anywhere on the desktop and choose Properties at the bottom, and go to Appearance. Personally, I like to use Windows Classic style there, yeah, because. Well, you haven't got pretty pictures and things like that. I find it just as quick. You know, it's basic colours and it's very quick. So I choose Windows Classic Style. Okay, apply. Oops. That shows you what it'll look like. You know, like the old Windows, like 98 or whatever, yeah, in its basic form. Click apply. Please wait. There you go. It's made everything grayscale, right? settings blah 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 let's get our screen well leave it in 800 for now actually because it's probably easier to film desktop I like to put none and use this blue color down the bottom yeah can you see that yeah that blue color if you choose none you can then choose a color there for your desktop yeah I like to use the blue I find it very easy on the eye or I use that mallard green that used to be the default NT desktop color apply that there you go our picture's gone we don't have that wasting memory although it wouldn't be much but you know I just like it to be everything to be really really basic now going back to this appearance one again here's some other things you can do to speed up the machine right if you look down there you can see effects advanced I right, will choose effects All right. use the following transition effects for menus and buttons, uh, sorry, for menus and tooltips. Tip, yeah, you've got a choice there, fade or scroll. Turn that off. Use the standard, the following method to smooth the edge of screen fonts. Leave that on, otherwise your fonts will look a bit raggedy. Show shadows under menus, detick that. Show windows contents while dragging, detick that. Hide underlined letters for keyboard. Okay, that. Right, that's that bit of the effects, yeah? So we've, we've turned off some of the visual effects, which again, just makes things a bit smoother. The next thing you want to do is go to My Computer, scroll up one using the up uh, folder key there, right click on the My Computer icon and choose Properties, and this box appears, okay? See that all right? Minimise the window behind it, and this is what we've got this box. And these are all basic settings for the computer. We want to change some things here. First of all, automatic updates. Turn off automatic updating, don't want that. Remote, absolutely de tick remote assistance, right? Because that's used as an exploit hack to get into your computer. Apply that. Uh, what else have we got here? Hardware, computer name, hasn't uh, it's, it's got that name anyone. General, whoa. System restore, uh, leave that on for now, yeah? Advanced, right, that's where we want to be next. Performance, visual effects, go into that. Now, this is all these crappy visual effects, right? And they make things look nice, but we don't want them. 
Animate windows when minimising, get rid of that. Fade or slide menus into view. Fade or slide tool tips. Fade out menus after clicking. Show shadows on the menus. Show shadows under mouse pointer. Show translucent selection rectangle. Show windows contents while dragging. Slide open combo boxes. Slide task bar buttons. They're all things that make the menu sort of morph in and out and have shadows and all this crap. We want to get rid of all that, but we'd leave this one, smooth edges of screen fonts, yeah, because otherwise I say your fonts will look raggedy. But do tick everything else. So the only one we leave is smooth edges of screen fonts. Make sure that's ticked and all the others are unticked. Apply. OK. And that is pretty much that, apart from setting the um, screen resolution. It's, it's defaulted to 800 by 600, I'm going to set it to 1024 by 768. Okay. So to do that, just back out a bit there. Is that right? Start. Oh, actually, sorry. Right click on the desktop. Properties. Settings. Okay. Here's your screen resolution, less, more, it's set at 800 by 600, I'm going to put it up to 1024 by 768. Keep it on 32 bit, um, you won't actually sort of reduce any stress on a computer by putting it to 16 bit, okay? So leave it at that. If you click the advanced here, you can see stuff about your adapter and monitor, yeah? Adapter, well we haven't added the um, drivers for that yet, so it's showing everything on available. Monitor, again, we haven't had any drivers for that or it hasn't detected anything. And a troubleshoot. Hardware acceleration should be left on. And this should be left on. Enable, right, combining. OK, okay that. Whoa. You see now that the resolution has changed. Yeah, we've got a bigger screen estate. Well, in as, in as much as everything's a little bit smaller. Do you want to keep these settings? Yes. Apply. OK. Right, that's all of our basic settings done. Okay, just there are our basic tweaks. What we need to do now is install the graphic drivers, the Hyperion patch, remember I said for the buyer chipset, and we need to install um, the sound card. Okay, so let's stop now, and uh, I'm going to network this machine up and transfer over the files that I need to set everything up. Okay, let's power down. Start, turn off computer, turn off, and uh, open your CD drive while it's doing that and take out your XP CD and close your CD drive, yeah? And that's that. Windows dithers, dithers around a bit here saying it's shutting down. There you go, and it's off. Okay, so once I've ported over all the drives and things I need, I'll come back.